Film photography's moved on, and so should we. Now I must say that I love the work of many of the old masters of film photography. Obviously the Ansel Adams, the Paul Strand, the greats, the Edward Westerns of this world. But that doesn't mean to say I am going to be wedded to the past. And a lot of young photographers are coming along and shooting film and doing things completely differently. And that's exactly what we need in order for film photography to survive. Now there are people out there who will tell you that you must slavishly follow the techniques and processes that they did in their youth, using the same materials and cameras in exactly the same way. And that's the only way you're a true film photographer. But I think they're missing a trick. What they did when they were young may have been considered radical or avant-garde, and they did not take notice of people who were telling them how to do their photography. And I think we need to do that as well. We don't need to be locked into the past and old ways of thinking. Now, like it or not, we do live in a digital world, and I actually do like that. And we need to recognise that this has brought multiple new opportunities to people who may well never have got into photography. They're exploring the world with their digital cameras and their phones. But that doesn't mean to say that us as film photographers or hybrid photographers can't take advantage of the digital technology which has led to an explosion of creativity all around us. Now in the past, as a film photographer, I am guilty of fretting over the likes of grain and sharpness in my images. I was obsessed with getting the most out of films, with reducing that classic film look, trying to make it look as clean and sharp as possible. But digital does that so much better. We no longer need to try and emulate that look anymore. We don't need necessarily the huge large format cameras, the super fine developers and the slow techniques that used to achieve those results. You can do it far better in digital, so why not do it in digital if that's the look you're going for? Now, by far the most popular way of getting your film images out there into the world is via some process of digitization. Now, traditionally, this was done with film scanners, expensive and large devices, very, very precise. Not so many of them around anymore because we're all using our digital cameras to digitize our work. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. In many ways, once you've digitized your, your negative or your slide positive image, you are working in the same way as any digital photographer. It's just that your original medium was film. And now you can take the image and use all those fantastic tools out there, Lightroom, Photoshop, and all the other creative options available to you to manipulate the image to make it look the way you want. Now, this has been a boon to film photographers. No longer do you need that steep learning curve as you learn how to manipulate your images in the darkroom and get a reasonable result. It wasn't something simple and straightforward and it still isn't. And it wasn't for everybody. Now this did then limit the amount of people who could get their images out there. It was almost a select few who had access to those tools and techniques and had those skills who could partake in demonstrating their skills, who could put their images out there for everyone to enjoy in the form of a print. We're no longer shackled by that anymore, so why should we feel the need to follow those original processes? Now this brings me very neatly onto darkroom printing. There again are people who will tell you that the only way you should print your film images is in the darkroom, using traditional techniques. They may even say you shouldn't use multi-grade papers, you should use the original papers, as many as the old techniques as possible to achieve the results that the likes of Ansel Adams did. But the problem is, they're actually forgetting the fact that many people in the past, the vast majority of people in the golden age, had no access to a darkroom. They had neither the skills, the time, nor the money or the space to do that. They sent their images off to be processed and printed in a lab. I mean, this is how Mr. Kodak became so successful and so popular, because he said, you take the picture, we'll do the rest. So even a hundred years ago, people weren't printing their own work. When I was starting out in the 80s, very few people had a darkroom. I knew one other person who had a darkroom. Everyone went down to the lab and got their colour prints or their black and white prints done for them. So why should we believe that now the only way to make a film image into a print is to go into a darkroom? It's complete nonsense. Now I have to say here that I am a darkroom user, but I am not exclusively a darkroom user. Oh no, I am quite happy to adopt digitization and I use Lightroom and Photoshop to do the subtle manipulations of my negatives. And then I may produce a print for 
hang it on the wall via my printer. I'll send it off. I don't mind sending it off to a lab to print and make a perfectly good job of it. Or I may put it into a vlog or put it on Instagram. Let's face it, if you're a film photographer and you are showing your work via social media, you are digitizing it. So the purity is gone in many ways. So again, why be so hung up about using these techniques to share your work with the rest of the world? The internet and the digital technology has given us as film photographers the best platform we could ever want to show our work off to others. So we should embrace it wholeheartedly. Digital photography does things so easily and so well and so perfectly that I don't personally want to always have that in my life. I want something a bit more expressive, so I will use film and film cameras. I am using an alternative means of expressing myself through film photography, through a different medium. But that doesn't mean to say that digital photography is any worse or any better. It's different. It's far more efficient, but it has meant that now when I go out and take images, I can use all the benefits of digital technology to make my creative film photography so much easier and better. So film photographers now are free to use a, a, a myriad of creative tools. You know, you've come across the, the likes of expired film and, and Lomo film, which are purple and have faults intentionally built into them. People will leave film on radiators for years and then process it and develop it and get all sorts of wacky effects, the sort of happy accidents, which I'm always talking about. And they are going out to the world and seeing things through fresh eyes, largely driven by young people, which is fantastic to see them getting into a medium, which sometimes seems a bit staid and a bit fuddy-duddy, you know, old man going out there with his big old film camera and, and, and berating young people for taking too many snapshots. Well, that's all nonsense and rubbish. I go out with Holger cameras, I have pinhole cameras, and I'm happy to blast away with very little regard for whether the image is, is classic or perfect. It's the image I'm making and I'm having fun making it. And it's probably gonna be quite different to images you will see from those locations taken with traditional film cameras or digital cameras. I'm expressing myself through a medium, which is by no means perfect. In fact, it's very far from perfect, but it gives a look and a feel, which I think is best done through a film camera using films which have that character built into them. I can do things with film I feel I can't achieve actually quite as easily with digital. So I say let's embrace this digital technology alongside film technology. Film isn't what it used to be in terms of its marketplace and its perception. Film is an alternative process now. People actually ask you when you're out and about, is that a film camera and why do you still shoot with it? My iPhone will do it so much easier and, and it'll, it'll be a better quality image. Very true, but I'm having a blast. I'm making my darkroom pictures. I'm gonna be doing more creative work in the darkroom this year, hopefully. I'm gonna do more lift printing. That's a bit hit and miss. You know, you get, and you get a lot of failures and all of a sudden you get those eureka moments when a print comes out so well, you know, it actually makes you feel fantastic about your hobby, about your interest, and it sparks you to go out and shoot again. And equally, I may shoot some digital work this year. I haven't done any for quite a while, but I have a hankering to shoot some color images at locations where film might not work so well, but I might carry a film camera alongside it. I see absolutely no reason to choose one or the other. I think I will just choose what works best. And for me, most of the time, that's film. And it might not be, film the way it was shot 20, 30, 40, 100 years ago, but who cares? This is modern film photography. This is film photography in the 2020s and it's evolving, it's going forward. It's not going backwards. We need to move forward, get the manufacturers making more films, more papers and hopefully more cameras so more people can enjoy this interest which is sparking so much enthusiasm around the world. And at the same time, shoot digital, scan digitally. Let's improve the processing tools. Let's improve the printing tools the digital world gives us. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again soon.